another review. Uh, we're playing against uh, Demir Control, um, but we didn't know this at the start. So um, it could have been anything. Uh, we just see an early preordain. So we see we see everything but the second Sleep Curse Fairy, which is fine. Um, we got removal. We got a couple creatures. We got counter spell. We're we're really happy here. And then we have two lands, so it's a pretty snap keep um, overall with uh, the intentions to be able to um, control the board um, with their creatures quite quickly, and uh, at least have a sleepy to be able to do whatever we want. So uh, again, I go through these reviews um, not only for you but for myself to go back and check our plays make sure that we did things correctly um, and just re rethink a, you know every line that I could have taken so so let's go going okay we go ahead and play the clear water um, untapped and then we go ahead and play cursey boy or sleepy boy and we pass so we don't know what he's on, but we know he has two blue mana, which means that he can have Counterspell. So we're basically just going to draw go here. We get the Curse Fairy, but we could play it, but we don't want to. So he plays a Bowmasters. Uh, this card being so good, we have to counter it. So, so I do have a choice. I could let it hit and then Fatal Push it as well, but we're just going to Counterspell it. And then what he does is he pitches Force Negation to this very early. Push here. We're obviously tapped out, so we obviously can't do anything. He pays the ward. He gets rid of Sleep Curse Fairy. But he has the tap. The important part about this is he has to tap out to do this. So he ain't. He's basically giving up his turn or the ability to um, respond in any way. So, which it allows us just to play what we want to, you know. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll untap, we'll get rid of the Orcish Bowmasters, leaving with them just the token. So, and then we we'll go ahead and we choose to play Sleepy and then hold up Snare here. So we're really not worried about this token. Now, if he plays another Bowmasters, this could get out of hand, but we're really not worth it. Him on three mana, he's not going to be super effective against us. So we're, we're just kind of seeing where this goes. We have another Sleepy, so he, he has to... He's going to think he has to play through some kind of counterspell to get rid of this. That he can't just tap out again to do it. So we're just going to draw go here. So we see a fourth land from him. So now we start thinking, um, do we untap here or do we play Mastermind? We add to the board here, holding up Spell Scenario here. So he then plays something that's a little bit um, awkward. Uh, plays a Remand for us. Uh, and he leads with this, which is kind of weird. Um, so we try to spell snare the remand. He then counter spells our spell snare and then remands the fairy mastermind back to our hand. Now we're at the end of his turn here. So and why I say this is weird is you can you can play remand um, way better. Like when you play a spell and someone tries to counter that spell, typically you want to remand the spell that they're countering back to your hand. Um, and not the other way around. So not don't shove their spell back into their hand. Um, especially, that works later. I mean, but it can work now too, you know. So And at the end of the day, he drew a card. And he tempoed us out for a turn. So, but there's, this is a very unique or flexible card that you can play with. So... I still, I recommend you play it if you've never played it before. It's really fun. Um, white just got a white version of Reman called Reprieve. And it doesn't counter the spell. 
it just puts the spell back into the player's hand to draw a card, which is a much better version of this card. <laughs> so keep that in mind. White gets something that blue didn't it, so. So we play our land and then we move on. We're we're instant speed at this point. Um, we can snap, spell snare, snap push, get wretch, and um, and then fairy mastermind again. But he knows we have this, so and he's just beating for the one one. So this is up in two turns, but we're probably going to tap. Yep. This time we choose to untap this and just move on to the next phase. And then we go ahead and play a land. And then we beat for three. So the cool thing about Sleeper's Fairy is this turn six, he's already gotten rid of one, which gave us an opening to play um, another, like another Sleeper's Fairy and then be able to kind of go and mitigate his resources out a little bit to where he's using more than us, to where we can gain a little bit of card advantage. So that's what we're kind of looking for here. And we're, and by swinging for a 3-3, three, three, even on turn six, we're on life total or even right now. So that's pretty nice, which is where we want to be. All right, um, he then castles and scries two for four mana, so. He then tries to, he casts Narset. So we see this Narset main board, and we immediately think of its uh, partner of Days Undoing. Um, that's really what we're looking at here. Um, so, and if you don't know what Narset does, it basically makes us to where we can't draw more than one card each turn. So. And then he can neg to it, and then he can go find a non-creature spell and put it to his hand. He digs like four or something like that, or three. So he does that. Um, we respond to the trigger, um, his loyalty, because what we don't want is we don't want him putting counterspell or any kind of counterspell in his hand. Um, in fact, we want to get rid of this Narset right now with that on the stack. So we're going to go ahead and march this. We're going to gain two life as well. Um, we, don't fet we don't fetch and grab another land. Um, one, this, uh, this threatens Spell Snare. Um, two is shuffling our library. Don't, don't underestimate the power of being able to shuffle your library. Um, those that have played uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor a lot, um, in, a, in a previous video, I talked about shuffling your library to get Goblin Guide triggers constantly. Um, being able to get a fresh card, a fresh look um, at the top of your library is very, very important. So do not underestimate that. So, But also, if I was playing Burn, you know, or if he was playing Red, I would be more cautious about my life total. So the extra life might matter, you know. But in this case, I just went ahead and kept it up. So he then tries to, he uh, island walks his uh, Luar revealed. And then he preordains, um, so. So then we attack for three. So we're ahead on damage for sure, obviously. And then we're going to go ahead and play another Sleepy. He then tries to draw three cards of his own. So I can't counter this. Um, all I can do is um, Fairy Mastermind and draw a card off his draw. Or Snapcaster and stop this as well. Or I think I do both, actually. So, so we're going to go ahead and remove the threat. So he then, or did I? Oh no, didn't I? I can't respell that. Did I? Oh no, fatal push, and then he drew through cards. Okay, I'm sorry about that. 
and then we attack for five. So we're we're in a pretty commanding lead on this board. Um, Illyria revealed, you know, he's basically tapping out his entire turn to draw three cards, which, you know, is really really good. So I mean, drawing three cards is no joke. But the fact he can't cast anything really is is the nice part. So he then shuffles his library, he grabs another. Which I don't know why he does, actually. I know he's trying to count that this won't be up. But it's kind of... he He's taking the fact that he can get another card off the top of his library. is going to be more advantageous than me having lethal on board. And I don't know that... Like, there are limitations to what I just said. Of getting a fresh card on top with a fetch. And one of those is stay out of lethal territory. <laughs> so being at six life is actually advantageous because he would actually live a turn longer. So there you might not want to. But if he wants to be if he wants to continue to be at the aggressive deck and maybe has like two removal spells in hand, he might want to do that. So but at the same time, I'm completely tap untapped. So so he's then going to attempt to draw three more cards. So, and then we fairy mastermind off this one and we draw a card with him on this. He then attempts a fatal push, gets rid of it. But by doing so, he just used the mana and I still have five power on board. This is why, this is why him fetching there doesn't make sense to me is because even all this is happening, you know, he, he ends up, he had the removal spell for one, which is, he took the aggressive line, but you could have done this, like, during a different, uh, instead of the end of, um, well, maybe he doesn't have a basic left, and maybe that's why he thought that he would have to get this to save the mana and one of the mana. I just think he goes a mana, like, he just doesn't fetch there because of this happening right here. I just I just think it doesn't mean much so and I can probably get this sleepy up anyway so he's probably thinking that too I'm just too far ahead kind of so get a fairy fencing so and at this point this thing can pump out a lot of damage or you can do what three four five six seven yeah so it can kill a seven seven if it wants <clears throat> so we then get Sleep Curse Fairy up, and then we attack for eight. So that's game one. Um, pretty, pretty standard stuff. He went through a lot. Now, granted, he also didn't find much. We had some counter wars. The only threat he really had was Orcus Bowmasters, which is what you kind, of, what you're going to see in this kind of a deck. You know, um, kind of control, Demir control list. At least what's being played today. So the Bowmasters is obviously good to control us. I mean, it hurts, but this is why Sleepy's there because the Orc Orcish Bowmasters it can't can't do anything to it. Um. Also, what was the other threat? Oh, the other threat was Narset. So we we definitely expect Game Two to see a Days Undying, a Days Undoing. So we we. We're assuming he's going to have that combo in there. So we'll go to game two. Alright. So here we go. Um, now we see a land, we see a land heavy hand. Um, we're playing a control list. So being a control list, um, keeping like a four land hand is actually advantageous to us. Uh, we don't mind doing that at all, having a slower type of deck, especially because we know we're against a control deck. So we know that the lands coming down on curve, you know, getting a land for the first six turns is advantageous because of what we're playing against. Now against an aggro deck, we don't necessarily want to see the first six lands in the first six turns. Um, we want to have more aggressive things and more reactions. But, but this is a good quality hand for our opponent uh, to be able to keep. Um, it's also good 
this would also be a keepable hand for um, aggro too, because we would have a fairy fencing for after turn one, and the marsh to rest sorrow for anything after turn one as well. And then we naturally curve out in this uh, creep tar pit, and then we happen to draw into the duelist, which we can throw away to uh, the force negation if we see like a one ring or anything like that. So we're we're pretty happy here. That's kind of what my thought process is of it. Um, it's always a challenge to play when to play, uh, play Creep Tar Pit. If you have nothing else going on, this is obviously a very easy thing. But sometimes this gets pushed back farther than you want. So, And then sometimes, sometimes you play this on turn three and you're just happy because they didn't do anything. Or what they did is you could handle it accordingly. Um, but creeping tar pit and a control list is too, it's just too powerful not to, uh, play in my opinion. A lot of people disagree with that. Uh, he plays a hall of storm giants. So we got to keep that in the back of our mind the whole time. He then goes for bow masters. Obviously we can't, we don't have anything else going on here. So we get a fairy mastermind. So we are then, we're going to choose to gain the life over the fairy fencing um this might not be in the right call maybe it should have maybe i should have played this instead of this um i was thinking we're playing snapcaster mage and this can come back um this can hit planeswalkers and this can't so that's kind of what i'm thinking of so he then uh preordains trying to search for another land probably so and then we take our one because we don't really care about this token for a while uh, we get spell center sprite and we just land we go um, land any control matchup we're just gonna land go them most of the time so play things at the end of their turn like right now we're gonna play duelist get that down we don't and this is where we remand is incredibly weak is he's going to just shove it back into my hand. Yeah, he draws a card, but this isn't... It's not where a control deck wants to be. It's actually quite a bad... For a control deck, this is not the counter spell you want. You want hard counters. You want mana leak. You know, even soft counters. You want mana leak. Um, you want counter spell. Drown the lock. So he's playing all that, but... He, it seems like he's even playing more counter spells um, than that. So he's going to put this back in our hand. We oblige. So I don't even... Uh, I could force a negation that there. And and we're perfectly happy with letting that resolve because he's now... He replaced the card, but it's probably not something else. He's already tapped two mana during our turn, so we can play anything now. Um, and... We still have Force Negation in our hand. We win, like, we're winning that transaction. So we're, we're very happy with it. So we main phase this, saying he doesn't have anything. Just so we don't have to play this. If we let him untap, and then he plays another land, we have to fight, we have to fight this coming down through five mana. It is much more um, efficient and more likely to come down if we just play it again here through two mana you know it just it just is and that's why we're doing this so also it's a vanilla creature at the at heart this is a vanilla creature of flash um and we don't mind if it eats a counter spell we just let it happen so just trading off resources now he he untaps and he attacks for one oh, we're okay just because he's attacking for one um we're then um, like I said earlier, we're then just fetching to get a new card on top of our library. So we then fairy mastermind to add to our board. If this gets countered, if this gets blown up, we're we're okay with it. So we're just draining him of resources, and we got now counter spell. So. So he then plays. Oh man, hit the wrong button there. A 
so we get rid of the token um, with fairy fencing. He then uh, gets another land with Lauren revealed, and then we try to. Um, I think he tries to draw two cards, and we counter that. That's what happened. So, yes, that is what happened. So then he plays a land, and we go back, and then we get Sleepy Boy. We play Sleepy Boy. So, and this is, it's, it's not a horrible thing to draw Sleepy late, um, especially against these grindy matchups. Um, yeah, it sits out here, but you have mana to, like, bring it out in a, re like, at a reasonable time. So, it'll get there eventually. So, draw three. We're choosing, because he's tapped out, we're choosing, um, we definitely have this as backup. So we're definitely adding to our board to start him on a clock. And then we're going to counterspell out of our board. So, so we'll go ahead and do that. And now we get rid of that. We swing for two. We, we have to do that because we add to the board here. Adding to the board here is important to start this clock because it is turn nine. Um, and then in a turn or two, we're going to be doing five, which will end this game quite quickly if you can't do anything else. So, and we go ahead and do that. We take a, we untap Sleepy. Now I could do more, but he has five cards in hand and five mana I wish to cast things. So we're going to say protect the Sleepers Fairy only do it once so and then what we went ahead and did is we're gonna untap sleep curse fairy on the stack he he's thinking about doing something but he doesn't so he then tries to gain control over this I've stated in other games that they're they're trying to steal um, sleep curse fairy so it's a very hard, it's a mana of intensive. I mean, it's for five mana, but if they're top decking this and we top deck this, it's a great play for them if they can grab it. So always make sure I played, I played wrong here. I should have made him, um, I should have made him pay the two before doing this because I'm a dumb dumb. Um, he then throws away Shark Typhoon, which is a win con for him to pitch his own force negation so and we go with that and then he he's smart and just pays it so he then uh gets it and then we choose not to attack this isn't the end of the world it's it's more of a um annoyance than anything else so so he attacks with my own fairy I mean, I still have, I still have five. We draw into a Mark Mark Tide, um, so this will be nice. So we go ahead and do this. He counter spells. We then spell snare. So we get a five five flyer, which is obviously okay. But it's in these in these grindy matchups. A five five six six or a seven seven Merc died finishes the game quite quickly and is a it's a huge threat as a one of against a lot of these grindy matchups and sometimes even not against the grindy matchups like if you're playing a uh, an aggro deck and they and we get to a stalled board state throwing down a five five flyer Merc tide is really really nice so. So the the worst part about this is we don't have a spell stutter like fairy to like make this bigger, so we kind of have to we're playing around that. So so he chooses not to swing here. He swings for seven. And we take this initial one um, because we don't have a bitter blossom going or anything. So and then we we draw bitter blossom. So we have to make. Uh, we have to start thinking about how we want to go through this because 
we we choose not to attack this turn we have six lives, so if we play the Blossom, we have five turns of blockers after the initial block. So, if we attack here, he can then, any damage basically takes turns off our life at this point. We have to block everything for the rest of the game. Or we have to, if we do take a hit, we have to kill him the next turn, basically. So that's what we're trying to do here. So we're trying to set up that entire transaction right now. Um, so we play we play the blossom saying that by not by stalling the board this turn, we're we're going to be able to as soon as I get the fairy to block with, that's going to be enough to start throwing everything at you. So that's what that's what we're saying. And that's the line we're going for. Now, I also have another line to tar pit. Okay, but we're not we're not playing this spell sort of sprite to counter anything technically. Now, if he throws something down for one mana, sure we'll take it, you know, and we'll try to stutter it. But really, spell sort of sprite is really a blocker here, and we're thinking of throwing this in, into an oncoming attacker, which will give us time. Because he's not going to throw Sleepy at us because it's an easy block here. Snap can block here. So what we're really worried about is this in our hand to block something. And then we're going to have a token here soon as well. So so he fires up the Giants, tapping out completely. So we're going to throw Snapcaster Mage in front of it just because it doesn't have flying. And I don't feel like throwing this out right now. So this can be last resort too. But I'm also thinking if he tries to preordain out of this, we can at least stop that. So here's our token. And now, now we can swing for eight. So he's dead in two turns without the block. And he'll block and he'll die in three turns. We have two ways to counter things. And we have now, now Spell Surf Sprite is online for three. So we, we've, and all of that was just because we waited a turn, we played a Blossom, we blocked with Snapcaster Mage, and here we are. So now we fire this up, we then throw 8 damage at him. So he chooses not to block here, which is normal, because he doesn't know about this other creature in our hand. So, worst case scenario is he has, has something big so we throw he doesn't attack with the sleep curse fairy here he he just attacks with the hall of storm giants and we then just throw the token at it so because he can't he can't attack us because we don't die next turn and he dies on the crackback that's what he is doing it but by not attacking that one turn we've set this up to where we can just constantly do this over and over again now he has to block he has to block the uh the murktide here has to so we get a spell snare we activate then we attack so he blocks he takes us three yep and then we have our we have our creature here so we're we're still happy here um we are playing we are playing very very tightly here because things can go wrong. So it just costs so much mana to activate this thing that it really puts him in a bad place. So he plays Days Undoing. And we had to think about it for a second. If I try to... It's going to end the turn if I let it resolve. So it's probably better to just let the thing resolve get a new hand a fistful of the counter magic and whatever and then to then to counter it and then him have something crazy going on and then be able to fire this up and because he's maybe not fire this up but play something else some threat that we don't want because the worst thing we wanted is like a orcish bow masters or something coming down but now we have our own so you know, we took a shot in the dark there. We let it happen. And then this is the hand we're there we're left with. We then play Sleepy Boy. 
we then start being offensive again. Now, we have two turns to make this happen. So he then tries to bounce. So, spell Sutter Sprite. So, he plays Counterspell. He's going to bounce this Murktide. We're not happy about that at all. Because it pretty much, to get this online, we have to play it next turn and then attack at the very, very end. But we're not, also, we're not mad because we have Sleepy too. So, and the Bowmasters. So, playing the Bowmasters here while he's tapped out means that he can't draw any more cards. And if he does, um, we're, you know, we're just going to, he's never going to get back in the game because of it, so... He spent three cards now, so trying to deal with stuff. And we still have the board. He then d spends five mana to draw three cards, trying to get out of this. So at this point, though, the worst thing about drawing the lock in our opening hand was the fact that all the graveyards were killed, basically. And now, now I can start doing this stuff. And he's going to drown the lock by drown the lock. He's going to take us down to two, which will take us to one. But we have a board now, and so I had to think here. So we have Pithy Needle, we, Murktide's useless because that's Summoning Sickness. Bitter Blossom's useless. This will kill us. We have a Pithy Needle that we can stop. Basically, haul the, haul the Storm Giants. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but we have to kill him this turn. So we have to kind of choose and pick our poison a little bit. Um, so we're attacking, but how do we attack? So I could put everything into Sleepy Boy. He's tapped out, mind you. So, you know, but we have to still play to our outs. So we can kill something, but then he just blocks our army token. Because if I spend any more mana here, we can't tar pit. And Tar Pit's probably our best answer here. Um, so, and we also have to remember that March of Rush of Sorrow is in our deck again. Um, but it won't matter next turn. So, there's no other way really to do this other than just the fire up Tar Pit and swing. Um, it's really the best option. And that's what we do here. So, but... And he has nothing. He has nothing to deal with this, which we thought he wouldn't. But um, if he could make us draw a card, we would lose. Like there's so much we could lose to right here, right now. Um, but letting the days undoing real uh, without the Narset in there, um, it helped us out. We we got a good hand um, off of it. He was able to bounce the Mark Tide. Um, and hang in there he just lost by one <laughs> by one damage and and this is all off of playing the bitter blossom when we were at six life super late but we we can do that because he's playing a grindy control deck and we had a board and he didn't so uh, i mean he was like firing up hall, uh, storm of the hall giants basically and we were saying that we could get there before him so anyway uh, that's a review so thanks for stopping by and uh, I'll see you next time.